Hey guys, what is up and I welcome you to a new League of Legends video. As I'm sure most of you are aware, Zarath recently did get reworked and I'm here to make a video to hopefully give you guys a bit more light onto how he should be played, just in case some of you think that the rework is making him a lot worse than he was before. I've been playing him quite a bit and I'm actually somewhat enjoying him and there's many reasons why I enjoy him and there's also many reasons why I don't enjoy him, so hopefully I can cover as much as I can about that in this video while also giving you guys some tips and pointers on how to play him. So the new Zerath fills a slightly different role compared to the previous one. The old one was able to be played as a mage type assassin champion since he has one main combo with his ultimate and his stun that can usually lock down a squishy and burst them down. The new Zerath is more of a traditional type mage that is built more at sieging and poking. His burst potential is of course still there, but is just simply not as strong and it's a bit more risky to use if you go all out. The main reason of this is due to his ultimate. You can't always just simply use your ultimate when trying to burst down a target that is within your range of your W and or your E, since if you don't kill them within the time frame that they're stunned, they are potentially just gonna simply get away or just turn around at you and just burst you down as well. Take a look at this example, here I'm standing on the side trying to find someone I can pick off, I see the ashes coming a little close, I land my stun, land my W right in the center, throw the Q, it's not enough to kill her and I die. Now if I did have my ulti and use it there to finish her off, that would have even more further guaranteed the pull by Blitz. Since I'm so immobile while using the ulti, with the old Zerath I would have been able to combo the skills a lot better and finish her off a lot faster. One main reason is of course his ultimate makes him stand still and after you're done standing still, the old Zerath will have a move speed buff just as he moves but now you don't have that. With the old Zerath, comboing an E and your Q together for the stun and damage will technically do more damage and faster overall since you have more time on using your ultimate, yet here, by the time you do your stun and fire your other skills, of course your Q and your W, and then use your ulti to finish off the targets, they are about to come out of the stun and chances are you only got time for one guaranteed hit from your ultimates. With the old Zerath, you can just get all of your skills, even all three charges of your ultimate off, really quickly before the stun even finishes. But on the bright side, Zerath now has three abilities not counting his ultimate that deal damage as opposed to two. So with all these things in mind, I am not trying to say that the new Zerath is bad, nor worse, just different. Let's start off with this passive. This passive is only good in the laning phase. Outside of laning phase, especially late game, it seems to fall off extremely hard and more or less just be completely useless. At least the old passive made you a bit more tanky against assassins. But of course on the bright side, the new passive does make your laning phase a lot better since you have so much more mana sustain, especially if you auto attack a champion and get triple the mana back. So his passive is pretty much the opposite of what it used to be. Before, it used to be pretty useless in the laning phase, but not that bad in the late game. Now, in the laning phase, it's pretty useful, but late game, quite useless. Like I mentioned earlier, he does now have 3 spells to poke with and deal damage with as opposed to 2, which is a very nice thing, making his laning phase pretty strong and he's also really strong at sieging turrets and just poking from afar. His Q has great range, especially since it doesn't require another skill to poke from a very far distance. But unless you are hidden, it can be of course somewhat hard to land and easy to dodge for the enemy champion since they see you charging it up. The damage however is great, it has amazing wave clear, it has great poke, and also a really nice follow up after your stun and or slow. You can usually blow the Q without charging it since the damage is of course the same no matter how long you hold it for, to throw it off really quickly for the fast harass after stunning and this is what I usually do. Let's jump back to a clip I showed at the beginning of the video. As I'm going for the offense on Ziggs as you can see I'm being really close to him because I'm trying to use the Q at the closest range as I can and to do that you have to be really close to the champion as often as possible. This of course can be very risky so you should only do this if you are on the offensive and follow it up after your E. Let's go to his W. This skill is probably my favorite so far in his arsenal simply because hitting it in the center applies an amazing slow, huge damage, even more than his Q. In lane, this spell will deal tons of damage and is a great complement to his kit to offer some form of burst. You can always throw it off and hope to land it in the center and then follow it up with a Q harass, but if you can land your E first, the stun, your harass damage is huge, assuming you land the W of course in the center, which you should, and then follow it up with a Q. Looking at the clip I'm showing right now, you're gonna see a pretty decent example of this. This is only level 2, and of course, I'm trying to harass as much as I can with the Q and W, landing most of them of course at W, not in the center there, but it is still pretty decent in poke, and as the clip keeps playing on, you're gonna see that LeBlanc goes for the CS, and I actually land my W, I believe in the center, does pretty nice damage and I know that I'm in the offensive so I walk up to her, start auto attacking her and just really show my dominance in the lane. Once you get level 4 and level up your E, this becomes even easier. 
Because if you can land your E at the beginning and then follow it up with a guaranteed W center hit plus the Q, your damage is quite huge. His E of course now stuns by itself, making it pretty good and not as reliant on your other skills to actually get the stun off. The damage is mediocre compared to his other skills, which is why of course he should level it last, but the main use of course for this skill is just to be used as a setup. Don't forget that the farther the range, the longer the stun, meaning that you want to try and throw it as far as you can, but then start walking up a bit in the lane so you're in range of your Q at the minimum range. The typical combo in lane is just to land your E, throw in a W, land it in the center, and then follow it up with a quick Q. An important thing to remember is that holding your Q longer will not make it deal more damage, just have longer range. If you are trying to combo in your ulti as well, you want to try stunning while being in range of your Q's lowest range so you don't waste time charging it up so you can simply stun, W, Q ASAP and then begin your ultimate even though you'll probably only have time to get one guaranteed hit. Now finally, let's jump into his ultimate, which I honestly think is somewhat of an anticlimactic skill, especially when you compare it to how good his Q and his W are. It is way too easy to dodge and one shot really does not deal that much damage. The ultimate is completely reliant on you being able to hit all three or at least two shots. My tip with his ultimate, don't try to land it on opponents that are running Free. It is too hard to predict and chances are you will miss a lot of the shots if not all of them. However, if you have to do this because you're trying to pick off a low HP person running away, I recommend you don't hesitate. Instantly fire all three shots right away, making it as hard to dodge as possible. Don't fire, wait 3 seconds and then fire and then wait again. Throw it all right away. This should definitely increase your chances at hitting at least 2 hits of the 3. Take a look at this example, I'm walking down to the bottom lane because I see people are diving. As I look down, I see the Pantheon is very low and he's actually about to back in that bush. So what I do is I look at my ultimate, I see the range, just when it's enough range, I pop it and I fire the shots right away because the enemy team of course sees that my ulti is ready to go, they see the big marker around, so they will be a lot more cautious which is why you fire it right away before they have any big chances to react and get ready to begin dodging. Another cool thing about his ultimate is that it can be very useful to help a teammate from afar either to secure the kill or if they're being chased to scare off the enemy team. This ultimate really shines in team fights or when you're trying to attack someone from afar while they're also busy with something else. In a team fight, you can definitely pop this ultimate and then use it on the squishes in the back line since their attention will be primarily focused on dealing the damage to your team. And once you either eliminate them from the fight or make him low enough to have to back, you can finally walk in and start using your other skills to help the team. I don't think it brings as much overall damage as the old ultimate would in a fight, but this one is a bit better to pick off someone that's completely in the back line. And of course, just a better global presence all around. Overall, the new Zerath is not bad, just different. Let's take a look at this clip as another example. Once more, I'm waiting on the bottom side of this area to try and pick someone off. I see the Riven, I throw my stun, deal a lot of damage, land the W, land the Q, she's again at very low HP, just like the Ash from before. But of course, Riven being naturally super mobile, it makes it so hard for me to finish her off with my ultimates. A big problem with Zerath, and of course this applies to the old Zerath as well, just not as much since his W gave him move speed, is that if he gets caught, it can be really hard for him to get away. He's not the worst at it since of course he does have a pretty decent stun and slow, but he's also not the best because he has no form of dash. For instance, like LeBlanc. So in this clip so far, you're gonna see some really cool pickoffs and all that good stuff, but as the Pantheon finally comes in, it makes it really hard for me to get away. I mean, I almost did get away thanks to my E and W being pretty useful, but the Lizard on the Q just barely finished me off. So overall, if an Assassin does jump on you, it can be somewhat difficult to get away, especially if you miss your stun, but if you land your stun and follow it up with a W, you have a decent chance. But again, it doesn't compare to someone like a LeBlanc who just has two dashes. So before I end this video, I want to give you guys some more final points on the new Zera. Usually you want to use his ultimate on people that are focused on other tasks or they are CC'd. It can be pretty hard to burst someone down fully, however his EWQ combo is still pretty strong especially considering that he has 3 damaging spells as opposed to 2 like before. I honestly feel like his new kit with those 3 spells is super good, I think it's just amazing, but his ultimate just falls behind compared to how good his other skills are. His laning phase is also really nice with his passive, giving him a lot of mana back. Again, he has 3 damaging spells in the laning phase, really good harass, great combo, great synergy, but his passive will fall off very hard in the late game and pretty much becomes trivial. So even though I would probably prefer the old Zerath, just because he has the assassin style to him with being able to burst someone down really quickly, the new one is still really good. 
He's a lot better at dealing damage from afar and just overall better sustained damage as opposed to burst damage. And if you're on the edge of whether or not you should try him out or buy him or whatever the case may be, I do recommend trying him out. He's definitely not a bad champion. He's just different. But that's it for this video guys. I really hope you learned something new and maybe will give the new Zerath a whirl. If you have any questions about this Zerath, please post them in the comments below and I will try to respond as many as I can. For skills, I quickly want to mention of course leveling Q, W and then E and then items is really situational and you can just go standard AP magic items such as an Athenes, a Rabadons, an Hourglass and a Void Stuff. But that does mark it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. Peace!